plus 23 with respect to turnovers. Hard, aggressive, tough football. And you see them pursuing John Huffnagel here. He just never really got a chance to get set. Barring a tremendous punt by Ken Clark, the Ticats are going to enjoy the best field position of the ball game. Fields allows the ball to bounce back toward the Saskatchewan line. It's picked up by Kerry Smith. And Smith, with good determination and hard running, gets inside the Saskatchewan 40-yard line. And so the Ticats will be knocking on the door. Let's go to Bill Stevenson. Sue Dasso is with me, our Brute fan survey girl. Now, all these fans, and I'll tell you it's nearly as well, as much as the Hamilton Tiger Cats are going to win easy. How about it? Well, I'll give you one clue. They picked <laughs> Hamilton as the Grey Cup winner, so I guess they would pick them for today, yes. What do they think they're going to win by today, Sue? By a whole 12 points. <laughs> is that? 12 points Hamilton Tiger Cats can be expected. Thank you, Sue Dawson. Thank you, Bill. Rufus Crawford on his first carry of the ball game gets a couple of yards at most. Carl Cornell, number 52, was in there to make the stop. And so it is still scoreless. Hamilton and Saskatchewan, and we'll be back in just a moment. In stadium, I'm Pat Marsden, along with Mike Wadsworth and Bill Stevenson. The Hamilton Ticats have possession at the Saskatchewan 37 and a half yard line. Second and a long seven, if you prefer, or a short eight. Clements puts it up for Keith Baker. It goes right through his hands. Baker went high in the air. Billy McBride was a step or two away from him, but Baker couldn't haul it down. We've seen Hamilton now on two different possessions. They've had the opportunities. The protection is given to Clements. Baker ran a great route. They had a couple of receivers wide to that side. Baker being the outside man. Isolated him on McBride. You could see that he was open by a couple of yards, but Clements just overshot him a little bit. Hamilton missing just by inches on what could be very successful drives. A 45-yard field goal attempt from Bernie Ruoff. It is wide. White Edwards takes it 20 yards deep in the end zone. And now goes down on one knee to concede the single point. So Ruoff's 45-yard field goal attempt goes for a single point, and the Hamilton Tiger Cats go out in front 1-0. I would think that Joe Farragelli and the Saskatchewan coaching staff, although not pleased to be trailing, would be thankful on this Thanksgiving day that they came out of that with just a point scored against them. When you see the Hamilton Tiger Cats behind Tommy Clements starting out at your own 39-yard line, you're pretty well hoping that they're only going to get three. On that occasion, they got one, so I agree with you. Well, the line of scrimmage had been the 37, so that's where the Saskatchewan Rough Riders take over. They give on the draw to Lester Brown, and Brown is tackled from behind as he crossed the 40 to about the 41-yard line. Grover Covington, who has started extremely powerfully for the Hamilton Tiger Cats this afternoon, was there to make the tackle again. Well, if the Saskatchewan's going to run, they'll tend to run more to the left side, trying to attack Carmelo Carteri. Not that he's particularly weak at the linebacking position, but Zambiazzi on the other side is so strong, you'll tend to stay away from him. The game was about three yards. It is second and seven. Oh, Hoffnagel did a great job to get rid of the ball, and then what a job by Chris to France to haul it down for the first down. Harold Woods cut to France down the moment that his fingers touched the ball, but uh, Hoffnagel read the blitz and unloaded quickly. It was just a perfect offensive play, a great catch, and I'll tell you, he did some job to hold on to it. The Riders get the first down, and they scrimmage now at their 49-yard line. Joey Walters makes the catch and steps out of bounds at the Hamilton 43-yard line. A good job by Huffnagel. Everybody was covered temporarily, and then Walters just did a sideline bend out and made the catch. Harold Woods forced him out at that point. The gain is 18 yards. I'll tell you, John Huffnagel is not known for being fleet of foot, but he did a pretty good job to get out and around there. Jim Muller, number 69, trying to chase, but Grover Covington got caught to the inside, and he allowed Huffnagel that extra time. Saskatchewan has five first downs already. Hamilton doesn't have any. This is Lester Brown. 
right. And Lester tried to cut it inside, got to about the 41-yard line, but that man Covington was there once again. Grover at 6'2", 235 pounds, playing his best first quarter of the season. Saskatchewan would like to be able to get some points on the board for these first downs they're accumulating, but one thing they are doing, Pat, working against the wind as much of a factor as it is in today's game, they're pretty well controlling the clock and improving their field position all the time. The wind has got to be blowing somewhere around the 20 mile an hour range. Second and eight. The pass is there. Walters makes the catch at about the 34. Excuse me, that was Dwight Edwards. Dwight Edwards, 33, made the reception. David Shaw made the tackle. And it appears that Edwards is short of the first down by a full yard. You can see Saskatchewan's game plan. They're just working underneath that secondary, working at 8, 9, 10 yards, sometimes 12, but just coming inside and underneath them, trying to get in behind the linebackers and in front of the secondary. Bob. It is third and a full yard to go. And the Riders will go for it. I think it's a good call, don't you, Mike? Well, it, they say you should be able to get that yard when you need it. You're well into Hamilton territory. Your offense is rolling. Yeah, I agree with it. Let's go for it and see what we can get right now. Let's keep the drive alive because it's been an impressive one. Third and a yard. Huffnagel keeps it himself. And he appears to have the first down. Well, let's credit Bob Holy and Roger Aldag with doing a good job because they just shot out against Burley and Jim Muller. Priestner had also fixed himself down in the middle there, and they just routed those people out of there and gave Huffnagel that little bit of room. Boy, that Saskatchewan offense is doing a number right now. They have gained 78 yards. Hamilton has gained two. Saskatchewan. Pat, Mike. I just want to interrupt for a moment and tell you this wind is very changeable. At times we're getting extremely strong and then it dies down. So it is long and short, in other words. It's strong and then it is not so strong. So it's a very changeable situation on the field. And that is very common to Ivor Wind Stadium. First to ten, Saskatchewan. Pass is no good. Intending it for Krista France, Carmelo Cartieri. Right on defensive co the defensive coverage for the Ticats. So it'll be second and ten, Saskatchewan at the 33-yard line. Huffnagel has been good on five of eight pass attempts so far for 58 yards. He's done an excellent job in this first quarter. They're inside, three minutes left to play, and a quarter that has really moved along. Huffnagel delivers at the last moment, and what a job by Harold Woods to knock the ball down just as Chris DeFrance thought that he was going to have another reception. So we're still scoreless, Hamilton and Saskatchewan, and we'll be back in just a moment. The Saskatchewan drive has stalled, so Paul Watson comes out, and his field goal try will come from about 40 yards away. That win looks brisk right now. Yeah. It was wide. Oh, yeah. David Shaw running around back there now concedes the single point. And I think the last time I gave the score, I mentioned that it was scoreless. It is not. It is now tied at one, having forgotten Bernie Ruoff's wide field goal attempt. It is now tied at one as we go to Bill Stevenson. I've got Bernie Ruoff with me. Bernie, this win must be making it a bit of a nightmare for the kickers. It's pretty tough. Like Paul just missed one like I did before. The wind's coming across the field, but if you get it up high, there seems to be a swirling effect. And if you don't get a good spiral or anything along those lines, you're going to be in a lot of trouble today when, when you're kicking. A lot of trouble. You need a meteorologist. Pretty well. <laughs> yeah, pretty well. Thank you, Bernie. Hamilton starts from their 35-yard line. Smart play by Clements. He saw that the wide receiver was covered. He was trying to set up that flanker screen. And because it was covered, he pulled it back down and scooped about the 41-yard line. A little it's bit of razzle, razzle, Pat. They had both their backs, Crawford and Bragignolo, come off to the left, which is usually the sign to, that Clements will roll to that side. And then he went to turn to the back side to screen to Baker, but Saskatchewan played it too well. 
They spot the ball right at the 40, so it's a gain of five. It is second and five, Hamilton, looking for their first first down of the ball game, and they will not get it because in there was number 66, Mike Samples, to haul down Tom Clements inside his 35-yard line, and again, the Ticats will be punting. Mr. Hustle, Mike Samples, their defense has been one of the leaders with quarterback sacks. Mike Samples has had four. He ranks well behind Lyle Wozniczewski with 11 and Vince Goldsmith with 13. But a great job. By so it's Stuart Fraser, 11, and Emmanuel, uh, Joey Walters, number 17, back to return this punt from Bernie Ruoff. He booted at 51 yards the first time he kicked it. It's another good one. Fraser at his 18-yard line. And he gets out over the 30 to about the 33. Ben Zambiazzi was first down and the 32. A 58-yard boot by Bernie Ruoff with the wind at his back and a 15-yard return. First down, Saskatchewan from their own 34-yard line. Well, there's no doubt about it, Michael, that Saskatchewan has done a tremendous job in controlling the ball in this first quarter. The pair of receivers for the Hamilton Tiger Cats have mean so much in their offense. Steve Staper, Keith Baker sitting on the bench together trying to get their thoughts directed towards some good offensive game plan because thus far they really haven't been able to put it together. And yet on the other side, the Saskatchewan Rough Riders have. John Huffnagels had a good first quarter. And though we're tied at one, that certainly is not indicative of the play because Saskatchewan has started virtually every series in poor field position. And this is Greg Figure with his first carry of the day. John Priestner was there, the middle linebacker, number 36. And so, too, was Steve Parker playing at the defensive end spot today in place of the injured James Ramey. And I'll tell you, Parker did a very nice job. Joey Walters cut him right down yeah, early, but Parker bounced down right down back up, hustled back into the play, and was able to assist in that stop. The gain was about four yards, make it second and six Saskatchewan, with just 13 seconds left to play in this opening quarter. up as Figure takes the handoff and gets very close to first down territory. Now the placement of the ball will be all important with one second showing on the clock. And they would just as soon, I would think, have had that second tick off because they would have been able to punt with the wind. Now will they go for it? No, they're going to be punting. Be a pretty big gamble at that point in the field. John Priestner had blitzed from his middle linebacking spot. Greg Finger really did a nice job of changing directions. He was coming up to that left side, veered off to the right. Priestner had been picked up in his blitz, and there was some running room, but Hamilton closes down pretty quickly. So third and a full yard, and Clark will be punting. Oh, he gets a beauty away. This is a great punt into that win. Stapler takes it at his 22. Nowhere to go. Down very quickly for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders was Bob Poley, number 57, as the quarter comes to an end, and we're all tied at one. We'll return with the second quarter in a moment. Well, we're back and ready for some action here. The Hamilton Tiger Cats have not been able to move the ball. As a matter of fact, their total offense in the first quarter was one yard. Now they take over at their 25-yard line. First down, Hamilton. Clements with a screen to Mark Dragonola. He's cut down. The ball comes loose. Recovered by Steve Dennis. And let's change that to Andre Jones, who takes the fumble in for the touchdown for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. But the man who hit is number 37, Frank Robinson. Watch him react to this play and cut Bragadola down right there. You saw the arm go way behind him, and then as it came flying over, he lost control of the ball. Andre Jones, 28, is in there for the big turnaround, and Saskatchewan takes the lead. Here it is again, a screen to Bragadola on the right. Read extremely well by Frank Robinson. Great anticipation, a fine hit, and alert defense there by Jones. Andre Jones from the University of Nevada at Las Vegas picks up the touchdown for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders, 
who can go ahead eight to one if Paul Watson is successful on his convert attempt. And he is. Well, how about that turnaround? The Saskatchewan Rough Riders really crumbled in the opening half last week against these Hamilton Ticats, but if they come up tough defensively and they move the ball out of their own territory on offense, and really that's been the story of the game to this point. In many ways, Pat, it's just a reversal of last week, really, in the way in which Saskatchewan has dominated the Hamilton Tiger Cats. One yard in the first quarter of play, that's incredible. It's been all Saskatchewan Rough Riders, and now that aggressive defense of theirs coming up with that big play. Listening to head coach Joe Farragalli, he was just telling the offensive unit, he said, all right, now what I want to go for it. I want you to loosen up, and I want to see you going for more of the passes. So I think we can look for much more offensive action. It won't be nearly as uh, staid, maybe, as it was in the first quarter, because they intend to take advantage of that win now, Pat and Mike. Thank you, Bill. Paul Watson keys it up at his 45-yard line. Howard Fields, number 16, and Steve Stapler, number 3, await. As the crowd sits here in the high 50s, that's the temperature at Ivor Wynn Stadium. They're not too pleased at the way things have gone so far for their beloved Ticats. I think they're also sitting in somewhat anticipation of that offense beginning to do something. They're the second highest scoring offense in Canada. They expect them to be able to do something. Tommy Clements has been the engineer who's directed it all. But thus far, he's had some problems hitting his receivers. Receivers have not been able to hold on to some of his passes. Watson's kickoff goes deep in the end zone. Fields is 10 yards deep in there right now, and he will give up the single point to give Saskatchewan a 9-1 to lead. And before this game is over, that could be an extremely important point. Well, Fields, I do think, though, Mike did the proper thing. I mean, why I come out to your 10-yard so. line? Particularly when you're, you're working against this wind, uh, field position becomes so critical to give up one point under those circumstances, and particularly when your offense has been bogged down, I think he made the right election. Clemens throws quickly for D.P. Etro, and it's picked off by Jones again. Andre Jones, who scored the touchdown moments ago, has the ball in Hamilton territory. And finally, Keith Baker rides him down to the turf at the Hamilton 52-yard line. And something we have not heard at Ivor Wynn Stadium this year, the Boo Birds are booing that Hamilton offense. Well, no falling Tommy Clements on this. He delivered the ball very well to Di Pietro. It was the receiver's fault. He didn't hold on to what was a good play. But Andre Jones, you think he might be in the running for the Panasonic play of the game? Let me tell you, back-to-back -back turnovers... This man was Johnny on the spot, and what an effort he made to try to return it. To do it. <laughs> well, tell me, Jonesy, on that second interception first now, were you looking for that? Well, he did a little curl. He was in his zone that time, and I just had him come over in the right position, you know, at the right time. I saw a pop in the air, just like tip drill, you know? Well, on the first one now, the touchdown, it was just like picking apples off the tree. There it was bouncing to you. Yeah. Our linebacker came up with a pretty good stick there, and I was coming up. The ball just hit the ground. I just picked it up and went for it. Congratulations. Thank you. What a happy man, Pat Andre Jones. Well, let's see if Saskatchewan can make use of that interception. The ball went right through Joey Walters' hands and was very, very nearly picked off by Preston Young. But again, Huffnagel delivered the ball well. Joey went up but couldn't grab it. Joey wasn't too happy with himself. He kicked the ground. He feels a little upset. He knows that if Saskatchewan's going to win and stay on top of this game he can't drop those footballs as you mentioned before Joey came into the ball game with 69 receptions Henry was Chuck seems to be all right up on the sidelines now the offensive center of the Hamilton Ticats up Nagel on second and ten delivers and Walters had that one broken up by Harold Woods number six Harold Woods has had an outstanding first half. We saw him earlier when Saskatchewan was threatening in the first quarter getting deep into Hamilton territory. He came up with a big play on second down. And here once again, Joey Walters trying to work to the inside. And that's what they've been doing throughout the course of this first half. But this time, Woods came in front again and is forcing Saskatchewan to punt the ball away. 13-15 left to play in the first half. It is Saskatchewan 9, Hamilton 1. 
Stapler and Fields deep around the Hamilton goal area waiting this punt from Ken Clark. He puts it high. It bounces at the 10 and bounces back towards the Ticats. Picked up now by Howard Fields and he breaks out of there and gets to the 36-yard line. Well, he had Saskatchewan backing up, so he took it on the dead run. And the Ticats will take over at the 36, trailing 9-1. to We'll be back in just a moment. Well, the Saskatchewan Rough Riders were hoping to pin Hamilton deep, but Kenny Clark only managed a 33-yard punt. And then Howard Fields returned at 18 yards, so the Ticats get a break and come out of there from their 35-yard line. They trail 9-1. to Clemens fires. Keith Baker makes the first reception of the afternoon for him at the 44-yard line, and he'll be about a yard and a half short of the first down as Billy McBride was there to hit him instantly. Although Hamilton has had a woeful offense to this point in terms of production, they have had some open receivers. We mentioned it before. On occasion, Clements has misfired, and on others, his receivers have failed to hold on to the ball, but they have been able to get into the open. They just haven't been able to put it all together. Second and a yard and a half to go for the Ticats inside their 45-yard line. Give us to Rufus Crawford, and it'll be very close. I think that may have Frank Robinson again that just stopped him dead in his tracks. Robinson made the tackle. Great linebacking play. But Crawford was able to pick up the necessary yardage, and the Ticats get their first, first down of the ball game. Believe it or not, Hamilton coming into this series of plays had a net offense of minus one yard. But now they have a first down with the ball just outside their 46-yard line. A holding penalty will be assessed against the Ticats, no doubt about it, as Clements went down at his 35, and the Riders obviously will decline the penalty. Doug McIver and Tom Schultz were there to put the pressure on the Hamilton quarterback. Well, they had their backs go to the left. That's where Clemens started to roll. We'll get the call now from Lauren Woods. <laughs> 22, Mark Fragnolo is guilty of the holding. He'd gone off to that left side. Tom Schultz was the backside linebacker. He was freed up, and he just came right away and was right on Clemens. So they decline the penalty and force Hamilton into a second down from their 36-yard line. So it's second and 20. Wolves oh, has just missed the Hamilton Ticats quarterback, and then Di Pietro couldn't pull down what really was an errant throw. Di Pietro was wide open. He tried to one-hand it, but couldn't do so. Lyle Wozniczewski once again did a good job of getting early pressure on Clements. Clements then running out of the pocket. You'll see him right there. There's Wozniczewski. Now he's running. He's not well-balanced and set. And on the throw, he overshoots the receiver. Well open on the play. So Joey Walters and Stuart Fraser drop back to their 30-yard line. We'll wait this punt on third and 20 from Bernie Ruoff. up there. Fraser at his 39-yard line. Gets to the 45. And that's where the Riders will take over with 10 minutes and 42 seconds left to play in the first half. Saskatchewan has completely dominated play both offensively and defensively. They lead it 9-1. to one. And the trivia question for today, what quarterback holds the most passing yards in the CFL, single season and single game? Boy, I'll tell you, there's a lot of names that you'd want to think about before you answer that question. But just outside there, 45, the riders start. Hoffnagel puts it up over the head of Greg Fieger. Hoffnagel's pass goes incomplete. And don't be critical of the quarterbacks here this afternoon because the wind really does swirl at Ivor Wind Stadium, and it's blowing very strongly here this afternoon, so you know that it's a difficult chore for them. Alan Moffat, number 56, in at right guard this afternoon in place of John Blake. The two of them actually getting a little work, but 
Moffitt so far has played most of that spot this afternoon. Dwight Edwards is flanked to the top of your screen. Emmanuel Tolbert to the bottom. Up they go throws. A flag comes down as Krista France makes the catch at about the 53-yard line. Let's see what the flag's about. It may well be interference. We'll get the call now, though, from referee Lauren Woods. That's the call. So they spot the ball inside the Saskatchewan 35-yard line. It'll be second and 20. He must have failed to stay off the line of scrimmage, Pat, and crept up a little too close, got inside of Edwards, and became ineligible. They were going to penalize them 11 yards. Now they've moved the ball outside the 35. Brown is nailed by Grover Covington. Another six or seven yards deep. Covington read that drop perfectly. The moment that Brown got the ball, Covington was all over him. What an afternoon for Grover Covington. From Johnson C. Smith University, number 66, watch him. We've mentioned that they've tried to go to that left side most often to stay away from Zambiazzi, but Grover Covington has shown them that, listen, fellas, you're not going to have any more luck here because he shut them right down. Well, the Ticats send only Steve Stapler back. Are they going to go after this punt? Here they come. Ooh, they very nearly got it, too. Stapler takes it at his 34. Stapler with a good return as flags fly all over the field. Stapler got out over the 45. And let's wait for referee Warren Woods to give us the call. Bob Poley was down to make the tackle. Flip. Hamilton, 31. Well, Ben Zambiazzi is nailed for clipping, so the Thai Cats will be starting inside their 30-yard line at the 28. You know, we've mentioned Bob Poley's name twice coming downfield so quickly, and you look at the interior of that Saskatchewan offensive line. You got Poley from the Regina Rams, Roger Aldag from the Regina Rams, Brian Hillebrun from the Regina Rams. And you know something, Pat? Their offensive line has allowed the fewest sacks in all of the Canadian Football League, so... Boy, Credit to those fellas. First down, Hamilton at their 28-yard line. Rufus Crawford trying to get outside. Forget it. Robinson was there. And so too was Vince Goldsmith, number 78. Goldsmith made the tackle. There are Tiger Cat emblems and stuffed Tiger Cats and Tiger Cat fans throughout this park this afternoon. They haven't seen too much in their offense, the though. Their seven. defense has been tough and held them in. But so far, their offense has not been able to get underway. The gain was four yards. It is second and six. Women throws. Knockdown. Good defensive play by Bobby Jose, number 35. Ball seemed to be held up a little bit. Not too much strength on the pass. Jose did an excellent job coming in front of Lee Pedersen. Here's another look at it now. Pedersen trying to work from the inside out against the inside safety. He was almost in the position to pick it off and go. And wouldn't they have loved in Hamilton to see Jose return one for a big game? Clements has completed only one of eight passes. He's had one intercepted. As Saskatchewan has really shut down that Hamilton offense so far in this first half. Saskatchewan dropping back. He gets the first down. It is Saskatchewan 9, Hamilton 1, and we'll be back in just a moment. Great play by Bernie Ruoff, an alert one, Mike. Boy, I'll tell you, watch him belly back, though. I thought he was going to lose it. Took a big gamble here all the way back in there. Run. 
outruns Bobby Jose and then just gets up and has a club two, two and a half yards to spare. So it is first down Hamilton. The ball at their 42 yard line. Let's see if that picks the Ticats up. They have been listless so far. Thanks primarily to that outstanding Saskatchewan defense. Rufus Crawford. And Crawford runs into Vince Goldsmith, among others. Robinson was there, too. And he got to, now let's see where they spot the ball, just inside the 45. So Crawford gains just a couple of yards. How would you like to try to pick your way through this green and white wall? There just didn't seem to be anything there. Good block at the point of attack, but then just a wall of Saskatchewan defenders. Their defense is really pumped up. They're trying to avenge what happened to them in that first half last week. Lemons throws quickly. It is complete. Dave Graffy. And Graffy is all the way down to the Saskatchewan 31-yard line. Kenny McEachern made the tackle, but the gain is 35 yards. Clemens to Graffy. And he did a magnificent job. Well set up. He just slid out from his running back position. Made a good cut right there. Got away from number 20, Ken McKechnie, who overran it a bit and worked up that sideline. Unsportsmanlike conduct penalty assessed against Hamilton. They will retain possession of the ball and will have a first down. Ball is spotted now at the 41-yard line. Now they're bringing it all the way back. Frank Bush has some words to say at the sideline. That's the second flag, and that's what they're marching off now. I think what he was upset about is the fact that Jeffy was face masked and roughed on the sideline. The official was there and chose not to do anything about it. Ken McKechnie is the one who had come in, grabbed the face mask, and roughed him. Frank Cush was irate because it happened right in front of him. He led loose with a torrent at the official, something Cush normally doesn't do because he's a highly controlled coach. But on this particular occasion, it cost the Tiger Cat. Well, it cost them big yardage because now they start at the Hamilton 51 instead of the 31. Mark Ragnola. Let me correct that. Graffy is in there now in place of Bragignola, and Graffy was the ball carrier. Schultz and Robinson were in to make the stop. Well, they had great success with Graffy earlier. They're coming back to him. They want to get a little power running in there, throw off that Saskatchewan defense, which has been coming extremely strongly with that pass rush. The game was seven. It is second and three. The toss goes to Rufus Graffy. And Crawford... Gave up the ball. It was recovered by Bobby Jose, but they rule that he was dead inside the 40-yard line. I'll tell you, I didn't hear the whistle go until after Saskatchewan got it, so it may be their ball. Well, it is their ball now, but why didn't they allow him to return it? I don't understand that either, but the whistle had not gone. Listen to the crowd. Here's a look at it. Crawford, number 24, hit, but he hit the ground. He lost control in much the same way Huffnagel did earlier, only this one's a fumble, the other one. Joey Walters makes a diving catch at the Hamilton 51-yard line, covered there by David Shaw and Harold Woods. But it's a big first down for Saskatchewan on the completion from Huffnagel to Walters. 20 yards the game. Here comes the crowd again. They're still irate over the fumble decision. Up they go, just unloaded. There is great pressure from Steve Parker. And rather than take the loss, Up they go, just unloaded. And let me tell you, Pat, these referees are human beings. You think this kind of Reaction by the crowd doesn't put a lot of pressure on them. It is really tough to be out there, have to maintain your cool and, and keep a balance in this game. You've got the competing interests with both clubs, 
and you've got 30-some thousand people just howling down your back at every move. It's an unenviable position to be in. Second and 10, Saskatchewan from the Hamilton 51. Hufnagel in trouble, floats it up there, hoping that Emmanuel Tolbert could run underneath it, but it was beyond him. Let's go to Bill Stevenson. Bobby Hosea. Bobby, how about that fumble recovery? Tell us how it came about. Well, I sweeped to my side, and I just came in and took out uh, Rufus, and he, he fumbled the ball. And I just, the reason I stayed on it, I didn't know if it was a real fumble or not. I just wanted to be on the ball, and it, luckily they gave it to us. I know that the fans are up here, but uh, do you find anything different on the field? I no, mean, no, I, everybody's, you know, everybody's fine. What happened last week was forgotten, I hope, you know, and everybody's playing fine, you know. Gordy and I talked, so everything's fine. Great, Bobby. We're <laughs> pleased to hear that. Thank Good you, football game. Thank you. So Ken Clark drops back to the Saskatchewan 45 to punt on third and 10. Steve Stapler awaits at his goal line. And Stapler's really jarred at the 15. Frank Robinson, once again, I'll tell you, he has been a heavy hitter for the Rough Riders tonight. Frank Robinson, number 37. Watch him unload on number three, Steve Stapler. Right there. Stapler's return was good for 15 yards, but the Ticats start in the hole once again with three minutes, 40 seconds left to play in a first half that has been completely dominated by Saskatchewan. They lead it 9-1. to one. Keith Baker makes the reception and is down by Andre Jones. But Baker appears to have the first down at the 28-yard line. Well, we've seen this same combination earlier to Baker, just curling to the inside. Rocky DiPietro goes outside, Baker curls to the inside, putting some pressure on the secondary. They've had open receivers, they just haven't put it together. DiPietro makes the reception and should have another first down. So at 2.50 left to play in the first half, Saskatchewan leads Hamilton 9-1, to and we'll be back in just a moment. All right, here's the situation. Two minutes, 50 seconds left to play in the first half. Saskatchewan 9, Hamilton 1. The Ticats have completed their last three passes in a row. Clements is now 4 out of 11 for 68 yards. Hamilton with possession at their own 39-yard line. Clements unloaded at the last moment to Henry Waschuk. I don't know how he figures Henry is going to be an eligible receiver, but Clements is down back at his 29-yard line. Henry's probably trying to get the Carly O'Keefe Sports Game Star <laughs> selection as the offensive player of the game. <laughs> Tommy was going down, no question about it. It was a quarterback sack, and he saw a black and yellow jersey, so he just threw it to Wazja. I'll tell you, talk about those selections. Mike Samples, Frank Hamilton Robinson. Hamilton, number 50. You know, it's a no question about that. Tom Schultz, all those people have been so prominent in this outstanding defensive display that Saskatchewan's put up. Why is the ball at the 35-yard line? Because he was sacked inside his 30. The ball should be back inside the 30-yard line where Clements was sacked. They declined the penalty. Well, Joe Farragelli certainly upset at the sideline and is pointing in every direction. They should have ruled actually that he was a, that it was a quarterback sack because he was down. He simply unloaded to Henry Waschuk. Well, they're going to leave it there. It doesn't matter what I think. Joe's not too happy, and I think he's got a good case. Yeah. Never heard of a four-yard penalty in any event. <laughs> it's second and 14 right now. 
Lemons puts it up, and Keith Baker couldn't get both hands on it. Tell you, he's fortunate he got one because Ken McEachern had it all lined up to bring it back. But Baker got one hand and diverted its path. Schultz had great pressure on the Hamilton quarterback, Tom Clements. Isolation director Nick Volpe on Keith Baker again. He's the only man that Clements has had any success with, but that has been very limited. By the way, the last time Ruoff was in here and he ran, of course, for the first down, he said it was not a devised play. I just noticed them going back, and I did it completely on my own. Well, that's what we assumed because they did drop off completely. Be surprised if it was called that way from the bench deep <laughs> in his own end. Yeah. But he doesn't get much of a punt this time into the wind, and it'll go out of bounds. Let's see where they spot it. At the Saskatchewan 52-yard line. So only a 24-yard punt. And the Saskatchewan Rough Riders, leading 9-1, to one, will have an opportunity to get some more. You know, we really have to credit the Hamilton offense, too, Pat. I think there have been three turnovers by their offense one of which resulted directly in a touchdown by Andre Jones. But despite the fact that Hamilton's been so ineffective, that the Saskatchewan defense has been very strong, that the Saskatchewan offense has really only put one point on the board. Lester Brown on the draw crosses midfield and gets into about the 53-yard line. Grover Covington was there once again, number 66. So his gain will be about four yards, make it second and six. With a minute 55 and the clock running left to play in this first half. Five on the, play, second down and five. the only touchdown, as Mike pointed out, by Andre Jones on a fumble recovery. After Bragignola had coughed it up on the good hit by Frank Robinson. Huffnagel throws a land roll to Lester Brown, who recovers it, and they should have enough yardage for the first down. Boy, I'll tell you, that's getting a little flamboyant. Yeah, San Diazzi's trying to rule or claim that it was a forward pass, but it certainly was oh, not. Oh, no way. It, it was, was no, no more of a forward pass than the one earlier when Huffnagel turned and threw behind him. I'm going to develop the picture right now. Definitely a lateral. Absolutely, and it's a first down Saskatchewan. The ball is at the 46-yard line of the Ticats with a minute 29 left to play in this first half. Oh, would the Riders love to get another major score before this half comes to an end. And they're in a position to do something about it. Up they go throws. Joey Walters makes the catch and then steps out of bounds at the 29-yard line. Harold Woods on the coverage. Along Woods. with David Shaw. Woods went for the ball. We've seen him a number of times First come in in front of the receiver and make great defensive plays. He tried to do the same thing here. He seemed to be able to summon up a little speed and get a hand in there, but he missed the ball. Walters, with that great concentration, still was able to follow the fight of the ball and make the grab. Well, Joey has 73 receptions on the year now. No. And that one bounced in front of the intended receiver. Well, Emmanuel Talbert, number 19, with Gerald Best, the newcomer at the corner for the Hamilton Ticats, number 14, on the coverage. So it's second and 10, Saskatchewan. The ball at the Hamilton 29-yard line. The clock is stopped with 118 left to play in this half. Nagel delivers over to Francis Head. David Shaw was looking for the interception, but it was too high. Carmelo Carteri was there as well. And so Paul Watson comes into the ball game, and his field goal six-yard line. He's tried one from 40 yards so far this afternoon. It was wide. It went for a single point. Clock will start on the snap of the ball. And it will be spotted down at the 36 for Paul Watson. And this time it is good. So the Saskatchewan Rough Riders go out in front 12 to 1 with a minute seven left to play in the first half. 
surprising, I think, Mike, because uh, Hamilton has been so effective offensively all year. Oh, there's no question about it. It's not surprising to me to see Saskatchewan coming up with a very strong defensive effort because they've had some really outstanding plays in that defensive unit during the season. Offensively, uh, I don't think they've done anything too unusual, Pat. They've run the ball well, but they've been able to be competitive with anybody. I think the thing that's most uh, surprising is the fact that Hamilton has been so ineffective and has dropped as many as they have, and Clements has missed on as many as he has. Ooh, what a jolt that Rufus Crawford took from Frank Robinson, but he managed to hang on to the ball at the 42-yard line, so he'll have a gain of seven. They'll be in their hurry-up offense now. With a minute two left to play in the half, and time is now whistled in. Clements going deep for D.P. Pietro. He's got it at the Saskatchewan 35 with Kenny McEachern making the saving tackle. We mentioned earlier how many times they're running that combination pattern with D. Pietro breaking out to the sideline, Baker curling inside. They changed it up, and that time D. Pietro went down, hit the seam, got open, and they had the big play, and that's the one point about the Hamilton Tiger catch of the Thawies. Be wary of, they can strike from anywhere. They start from the Saskatchewan 35. The pass is complete to Baker, and he's ridden down by Billy McBride at about the 27-yard line. 45 seconds left to play. The ball is actually just outside the 25. So they're short by a couple of yards of that first down, and now the Ticats do huddle. Second and two. They give to Rufus Crawford. Rufus appears to have the first down. The clock stops with 29 seconds left to play. They'll move the chains if, in fact, it is a first down. And it is signaled as so by referee Lauren Woods. The Ticats don't huddle this time. And now time is whistled in. Clements goes to the end zone for Baker, and Billy McBride tipped it away. Baker is furious. He wants an interference call on McBride. No flag comes down. Well, I'd like to see it again. The fans are upset, but I'm not sure that Baker didn't interfere a bit with McBride. Let's just take a look. Nick Volpe has him on isolation. Well, there is definitely contact there by McBride. I don't know how vital it was to what happened to the play, but there was some contact. 22 seconds left to play in the first half. 12-1, Saskatchewan leading. They come on a full blitz. Clements has dropped. The flags are down, and the Riders may have been offside. I think they anticipated a little bit, Pat. Carl Cornell and company coming on the blitz, trying to get that big pressure. I think they guessed. And we're wrong, but we'll get the call. Outside against the Saskatchewan. 18 seconds. That'll bring the ball inside the Saskatchewan 20 to the 18 yard line where it is second and five from that point. Ticats still have their timeout remaining, of course. What's important to their cause right now is they need the first down if they don't get the touchdown. Lauren Woods talking things over with the Riders. Hamilton awaiting. Time being blown in, but the clock does not run. Because of the penalty call against Saskatchewan. That one was very nearly picked off. He was looking for Rocky DiPietro, but Andre Jones, who was the man of that first quarter, was there to break it up. Boy, well, I'll tell you, that was a badly thrown football. It was right into the arms of Andre Jones, trying to get the little seam there. Number 54, Schultz, was really the man responsible. The linebacker working his way to the outside stopped Di Pietro from breaking into where Clements expected it. Leif Pedersen will spot the ball at the 26-yard line for Bernie Ruoff to try this field goal. And he is good. So with just 10 seconds left to play in the first half, the Hamilton Ticats narrow the Saskatchewan lead to eight points. It is Saskatchewan 12, Hamilton 4. 
Pat, I think you have to say that the Hamilton Tiger Cats are fortunate to be down only eight points. Their defense has played extremely well. The offense, apart from that one big play to Di Pietro, really have been shut down by Saskatchewan. And with the number of turnovers the Saskatchewan defense came up with, you would have expected a little more production out of their offensive unit. Well, they've got 10 seconds. Let's see if Huffnagel puts it up deep for somebody like Emmanuel Tolbert or Dwight Edwards. Now they're going to run it inside to Greg Feger, who crosses the 40 and gets to the 42-yard line. And the clock stops momentarily with five seconds left to play, and this will be the final play of the first half. Well, the Riders obviously content to take an eight-point lead to the dressing room. They lead it 12 to four, and this will be the final play of the first half, firing a penalty. Up Nagel throws it as far as he can, and it's broken up downfield. And that will be the final play of the first half. It ends after 30 minutes of play with the Saskatchewan Rough Riders out in front of the Hamilton Tiger Cats, 12 to 4.